How's it going, Mr. Monroe? Pretty good. How about Welcome you? Welcome to the office. I'm doing well. Thank, Thank you, you for coming. Sure. So you are right on time for your two o'clock appointment. Okay. And I was just reading some notes that I saw from your primary care physician in your chart. It looks okay. like you're in for a cranial nerve assessment today. Yes, I am. And you've been having some headaches. Yes, I have. Okay. And that's kind of abnormal for you. It is. It okay. Is. Okay, so can you first just start off by confirming your last name for me? Sure, Monroe, M-O-N-R-O-E. Perfect. And can you also confirm the year of your date of birth? Sure, 1990. Perfect. I see that you just celebrated a birthday. Happy yes. birthday. Thank you so much. Perfect. Okay. So is it all right if we just get started with some preliminary questions? I sure. just want to get kind of a better idea of what exactly might be going on. Okay, that's okay. fine. So give me just one second. I'm okay. just going to clean my hands here. I'm going to go ahead and put on a pair of gloves just so I have them ready for when we start the examination. Okay. Are you feeling okay right now? Are you yeah. currently experiencing a headache? I'm not at the moment. Um, okay. I did have one last night. Okay. I'm feeling okay today. And did you take anything for that by chance? No, nah, I just no. drank some water. Okay. Does that tend to help? It does. Okay. All right, so let's get started with just a couple of things. Okay. Firstly, are you in any pain right now? No, I'm not. Okay. No active pain. And the headache that you had last night, if you mm. could rate that on like a scale of one to 10, how mm. severe would you say that it was? About a four or five. A four. Okay. And is that typical? How bad they are? Do they usually get worse? Mm, that probably was about as, as worse as it normally gets. Okay, so yeah. usually caps out at about a four yeah, or five usually, out of 10. Usually a little more dull. But it was okay. slightly severe. Okay. And dull, is that like a dull pain or is it ever like a sharp stabbing pain? Um, it's usually a dull throbbing. Dull throbbing. Can you point where exactly that is? Like is it? Um, normally above my eyebrows, okay. kind so of towards the temporal. side. Yeah. And do you ever get any pain in the back of your head, like below your neck at all? No, no usually no, kind of isolated here. Yes. Have you been having any issues with your sinuses lately? Runny no. nose, congestion, nothing like that. I haven't. Um, this this time of year, um, it's colder, so my sinuses don't bother me at all. Okay, this perfect. Time. So it's normally spring. It's probably not congested related. Right. Okay. But you do have springtime allergies. I do. Yeah. Okay. And can you tell me? An approximate onset date of these headaches how long have you been experiencing this uh, a few months now okay at, at least two months is there anything that changed around that time increase in stress change in sleep pattern any no. dietary changes weight loss weight gain that kind of thing you know i've been trying to figure it out and okay. I haven't so been everything for the most part has been pretty consistent since then yes. You start taking any new medications by chance? No, I haven't. Okay. okay. So really not sure what could be causing it since you have no active lifestyle changes. Right. Okay. And this is not something that you're used to experiencing, correct? No, it's not. Okay. Do these headaches ever increase to like the migraine phase where it's more severe and it's harder for you to control? No, it doesn't. Okay. okay. Has this had any effect on your sleep schedule? Are you sleeping less, sleeping more, not sleeping as well? Are you having a hard time falling asleep or staying asleep? No, um, it makes me want to go to sleep so okay. that I can have relief. So you do feel some relief after you go to bed? Yes. Okay. Okay. So do you find that they usually come on at night or is yes. it just most mostly at night you would say? Yes. Okay, and can you tell me how many hours a day you use the screen actively? So TV, cell phone, laptop, iPad? A lot of hours, um, at least eight or so for work, and then 
a few additional for personal use screens okay. and then television as well so eight to eleven yeah at least eleven okay so eleven hours on average which is pretty high so that is half of your active day yeah do you take any breaks in between those hours? So is there yeah. any period of time where you're away from the screen, yeah. resting your eyes a little bit? Maybe 30 or so minutes. Okay. 30 or so minutes at a time or in total? Good question. Um, about 15 minutes per, at, per time, and I'll say two or three times a day. Okay. So at least a 45 minute window yes. cumulative where you're not looking at a screen. Right. Okay. And it looks like you work from home full time. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. okay. And is that five days a week? Yes, it is. Have you been working from home longer than two months? Yes, I have. Okay, so this didn't start with your increase in screen no. use. It's just kind of coincidental that you also work from home. That's correct. Okay. Now, are there days during the week that you don't use the screen as much? So if you work five days a week, let's say on Saturday, you don't work, so you're not using your laptop. Are you on yeah. a screen less? Saturday and Sunday, I am on a screen less. Okay. Do you find that those days your headaches aren't as bad or they're not occurring or is it about the same? I believe they're not as bad. Not as bad. Okay. So part of what I would like you to try and do is start tracking your headaches if you're not okay. already. Okay. So just in a journal or on your phone, mm -hmm. just write down the time and day of the week it is that you have a headache, how severe it is. Okay. That way we can kind of start tracking yeah. a pattern. It sounds like this might be screen related. Okay. So your eyes are probably overworked, which is sending some misfiring of the nerves and it's kind of increasing that dull achy pain. Right. Cause you're just kind of overworking that nerve, constantly looking at the flat screen, especially with the blue light. Okay. So I'm gonna guess that that's probably what it is. Okay. Um, so if we start tracking the headaches, it gives us a little bit of a better idea of what could be going on right. as well as how frequently they're happening. And then of course, if they're getting worse, that's something that we would want to know as well. Okay. Okay. So in a five day period, how okay. frequently would you say you're having these headaches? So three out of the five days, every day out of the five days, at least two days, at least two. Okay. Do you find that anything makes it worse? Like if you have the headache mm. onset, is there anything that you might do that will make it feel worse or make it feel better? I haven't noticed anything. Okay, but you did say there's a decrease in pain with sleep. Yes. Okay. And have you ever taken anything for it? Yes. Tylenol, um, ibuprofen? Just Aleve, ibuprofen, Advil, those, those types of things over the counter. Any other symptoms that could be related or unrelated? Are you experiencing anything else? No seasonal allergies. Are you allergic to any food related items or any medication? No. Anything in your environment that you think maybe could be causing this like pet allergies, dander, that kind of thing? No. Nothing. Everything else has been consistent. Okay. Okay. Well, it looks like we can go ahead and get started with our examination now that I just have some kind of preliminary information done. Okay. So what I would like to do is get an initial set of your vital signs sure. so we can kind of see where you are at baseline okay. and go from there. So, excuse me while I just mm -hmm. gather this. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and start by taking your blood pressure. Okay. for that it's yeah, new so the velcro is I see, it's very strong very loud so i'm going to put this on your lower forearm mm -hmm. here okay. 
I'll have you rest your arm just like that to make sure your feet are not crossed. Okay. Do you typically have any issues with your blood pressure running abnormally high or abnormally low? No. My stethoscope on. Okay, so I'll be placing this right on the artery, okay. and this is going to pump up pretty high, so just bear with me, okay? Okay. Okay, so we're at about 145 over 78. Systolic number is slightly elevated, but it's nothing that would be acutely concerning at this time. Okay. So blood pressure is seemingly within normal limits. Okay. So I'll go ahead and take this off. Proceed by checking the rest of your vital signs. Okay. So I'm going to attach this pulse oximeter to your finger, and then I'll take just a second to register it as digital so it'll immediately input the numbers into our system. And then I'm just going to check your temperature. Just checking it in a few different places, looking for any obvious temperature abnormalities that could indicate possible signs of infection. I'm giving an average reading of about 98.1, which is within normal limits. Very good to go as far as the temperature and your oxygen levels are within normal limits at 98% and your heart rate was 64, which is perfect. Okay, okay so vital signs are well. Okay. It's nothing concerning there. Sometimes an onset of headaches can be an indication of high blood pressure. So I want to make sure that that's okay and I'm not seeing any indication of that. So we are all good. Just going to put this back. Okay, so let me just input some of that into our system. oxygenation 63 respirations are about 19 and you're on room air no supplemental oxygenation needed at this time okay all right james so let's go ahead and move on to the second portion of our examination so i would like to have a look in your eyes and kind of at your face as a whole. Okay. Really looking for any signs of edema or any asymmetry from one side to the other. We want to make sure that you're looking symmetrical, at okay. least within reason, and that there is nothing externally that would be pointing to why you're having these headaches. So I'll just have you kind of look wherever you'd like in the room. Just fix at your gaze for just a minute. I'm just going to have a look at your face. Looking at the orbital socket, any signs? of edema might be present in this area, but I'm not seeing anything. Look at the 
forehead, specifically the areas that you said you're feeling more of the throbbing sensation. Also looking around the neck area. I'm not seeing any signs of swelling around your glands or your lymph nodes. you turn your head towards me I'm gonna come just a little closer here sure. so I want you to center your face here and just look straight at me okay. can I have you smile for me perfect okay smile is symmetrical just looking for any signs of asymmetry in the face anything that could indicate maybe a TIA but I'm not seeing that here Ears are midline to the nose. Is it alright if we move your glasses for just a few minutes? Sure. Okay. So now I'm gonna have a look at your pupils, looking for normal pupillary reaction. So I'm gonna be shining my light in your eyes in various ways. I'm just looking for normal constriction and dilation, which essentially is the movement of your pupils open and close, okay? okay. So I'll have you look here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna shine this pretty close to your eye. Okay. Let me know if the light causes you any discomfort. Some people have light sensitivity. You have a very healthy reaction here. Just a good indication that there is nothing wrong with the pupil itself. So I'm going to perform what's called a swinging light test. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to swing my pen light back and forth. Okay. I'm just looking for that direct and consensual response. And I'm going to occlude one eye and do the same thing. Good. Perfect. Okay. So I want you to follow the light for me. I want you to keep your head straight like it is and then follow my light around with just your eyes without moving your head okay, okay. any pain or discomfort as i move the light to the very edge of your visual field here no there's no pain or discomfort okay and if we have you look up towards your temporal area no pain or discomfort here correct no. okay so what I'm going to have you do is have a look at my finger here. Mm -hmm. Now look at the light. Good. Again at my finger. And now look at the light. Good. Again, look at my finger here. And now at the light. Perfect. And here at my finger. And now at the light. Okay. Very good. Okay, so I'm going to have you follow my pen light as I move it out. Okay. And then all the way back in, follow it in. Perfect. Let's do that one more time. I want you to follow it all the way in. Perfect. Okay. Very good. So pupillary reaction is within normal limits. Okay. We want to just use a little bit of a different device here. So this is still going to be a light. I want to use this to test a little bit of your peripheral vision. So I would like you to keep your gaze here, okay. and I want you to tell me when this light moves in and out of your field of vision. So you right. can say it disappears and it reappears, just let me know when you no longer see it and when you begin to see it again, okay? Right. So keep your gaze here. There is also a marker on the wall that you can have a look at. Okay. So you should not be able to see it here, correct? That's correct. Let me know when it appears in your visual field. And when does it disappear again? Disappear. Good, and again? Appears. Good. Disappears. Good. Appears. Good. Disappears. Good. Appears. Good. Appears. Good. Disappears. Appears. 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 Disappears, appears, disappears, appears, disappears, appears. Okay. So four quadrants of your peripheral vision appear to be intact. I am going to retest that 
just a couple things here. So firstly, can you tell me what color this is? Green. And this here? Red. So same thing, I'm gonna move them in and out of your visual field. I want you to say the color mm -hmm. when you see it. So okay. if you see green, say green. If you no longer see it, say that it disappears, okay? All right. Green disappears. Green disappears. Red disappears. Red disappears. Green disappears. Green disappears. Red disappears. Red disappears. Red disappears. Red disappears. Red disappears. Red disappears. Green disappears. Okay, so you are able to see all of that normally. So I'm just going to make a couple of notes here. Feedback reaction. So it's the normal limits. Perversion. Plus two. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to another facet of your visual acuity. And actually what I'm gonna do is just slightly move out of the way here. Are you yeah. able to see this chart okay? Yes, I am. Okay. So it is a little close for a 20 feet exam, but because you don't have your glasses on, I'm gonna go ahead and use this. All right. So can you tell me what this letter here is? Yes, E. In here. F P T O Z L P E D P E C F D E D F C Z F F E L O P Z D D E F P O T E C L E F G D H C T sorry F C T um something D P L T C B O F E C O L C F T D okay so I'll have you redo that with your glasses on there were a couple that you got in incorrect. So if we can start from this line here. Sure, E, D, F, C, Z, P. And we'll skip down here. L, E, F, O, D, P, C, T. In here. F, D, P, L, T, C, E, O. Let's try that one more time. The bottom line? Mm -hmm. P, E, Z, O, L, C, F, T, D. Perfect, okay. So oh, sorry, I was reading on my that's about okay. That. <laughs> With your glasses, you are more than 20 20 vision, so that's perfectly acceptable. Okay. And you can see that this is green and this is red. Perfect, okay. So visual acuity is intact. Now I am going to just grab my book here. Okay. And these are Ishihara test plates, and this is going to test you for color deficiency or color blindness. Okay. So I have a couple different things that I want you to look at. So for this first one, this is just a test. I want you to tell me what color you see in the number. I see orange. And the outside. is green. And what number do you see? Number 12. Perfect. So what number is here? Number eight. And here? Number five. Good, and here? 29. And here? 74. Perfect, and here? Number seven, 45. Good, they're gonna get a little harder. Okay, two, uh, no number. Perfect. 16, no number. Do you see anything on this page? Yeah, there's like a snake-like pattern. Can you trace that for me with your dominant hand? Sure. Good. In here? 35, in here. 96. Anything here? Um, another snake-like pattern. Are you able to trace that with your non-dominant hand? Sure. Perfect, okay, so no issues with color deficiency. You were able to see everything pretty normally. Visual acuity was more than 2020 with your glasses. How long ago did you receive that prescription? Is it up to date it within is, the last year? It's only been a few months, okay, five so or six months. Current. Yeah. And did your prescription change from the last time you saw your optometrist? This has barely changed. Okay. Do you know how long prior to your last appointment you saw your optometrist? At least 
four years. Okay, so you were overdue, but you are now up to date. That is correct. And there was no issues? They didn't note no. anything abnormal? No, nothing at all. Okay. Did they by chance do the test where they put the dilating drops in your eyes? Yes, they did. Okay, and all of that was normal mm -hmm. as well. Perfect. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is switch out the head here, and I'm gonna be putting on what's called an ophthalmoscope, and this is gonna allow me to visualize your optic nerve, the optic disc, and just different parts of your orbital anatomy. So I will be getting very close to your face. If I can just have you lean forward for me. Sure. This might be a slightly uncomfortable because I do have to shine the light directly in your eye. I want you to just look straight ahead, okay? If I can have you open real wide for me, perfect. What kind of image you want to visualize the optic disc? And does appear to be well defined and with the normal limits. No signs of vascular edema, no abnormal coloration. Let me look over to the left for me. And all the way up. Perfect. So I'm going to gently hold your eyelid up. I want you to look all the way down. And all the way to the right. Perfect. Okay, so let's do the same with the other side. Okay. So first, just look straight ahead for me. And all the way to the left. Good. And all the way up. Gonna hold your eyelid. Mm -hmm. You can look all the way down. Perfect, then all the way to the right. Very good. Okay. So there is some slight discoloration on this side, just a little bit of abnormal redness. I did see that you smoke recreationally, so it could be the cause of some of that redness in the veins. You do not smoke cigarettes, correct? No, I don't. Okay. Nothing acutely abnormal. It is normal with recreational smokers to have some very slight redness in the eyes. I don't think that's related to your headaches at all though. Okay. Okay. So let's go ahead and move on to a couple different portions of the examination here. Now that we have your eyes tested, okay. I believe all of that is within normal limits. So okay. I'm gonna just replace the otoscope head here so I can have a look in your ears. Okay. I'm gonna make sure there's no signs of abnormal earwax or overproduction of cerumen, looking for any perforations in your tympanic membrane or your eardrum that could maybe lead to the headaches. If All there's right. any discomfort or swelling that's kind of pushing up right. in your ear canal, it's possible, unlikely, but we should go ahead and check. Okay. So I'll have you turn your head all the way over for me, and mm -hmm. this might be slightly uncomfortable. I do have to insert this into your ear. Okay. So just gonna pull up and back here, and you let me know if this is uncomfortable. I am able to visualize the tympanic membrane as Really gray, light in color, no signs of perforation. You do have some mild cerumen buildup, but nothing acutely abnormal. It's not overflowing into the external ear canal. Normal in color. And texture appears to be soft and waxy. Perfect. No signs of perforation. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the other side. Sure. Same thing. Tympanic okay. memory is visualized. Normal in color, no perforations, which is good. Less cerumen, less earwax on this side, but color is consistent. Seems 
seeing some slight dryness on this side, but nothing concerning. Okay. Do you use Q-tips or cotton buds in your ear? Yes, okay. Q-tips. So you just want to make sure we're not inserting those too far in the ear, but looks like you're doing okay. There was slightly more earwax on this side, but nothing okay. that I would say is concerning or related. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So why don't we go ahead and move on to an oral exam here and I'm just going to do a very brief oral examination. I have a couple different things that I would like to test. So I'm going to start by checking the dreaded pharyngeal reflex. So this is going to be testing your gag reflex. Okay. It will be quick. I do apologize, but I just want to make sure that that is working correctly. Okay. So I'm going to have you open up to start. I just want to visualize internal here. Good. Can you bare your teeth for me? Good. And stick your tongue out for me. Say, ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Hard palate. Can you bring your tongue up to the top of your mouth? Perfect. Okay. All right. I do apologize here if I can have you open and say, ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Good. Okay. So, gag reflex is definitely intact. And you're having headaches in the temporal region, I want to check for TMD or okay. what's testing your temporal mandibular joint, okay. testing for temporal mandibular joint disease, which is a disease in the bones of your mouth. Okay. So to do that, I'm going to use a bite block. And this is just a hard styrofoam block that I'm going to have you bite down on in various positions and it'll help me test for any weakening of the joint here. Okay. okay? So I'm going to have you open and bite down hard. Any pain or discomfort there? No. We'll do this side, bite down hard. Any pain or discomfort there? No. In the middle? No. Okay, one more time here. No. And here. No. Good, okay. So, seemingly no abnormalities with that. So next I'm gonna have you move your jaw side to side, like there you go, good. And if you could open and close. Perfect. I'll help you swallow. Good. Okay, so all of that seems normal. So the next thing I'm going to do is a bit of a taste and smell test. So I just have a very small drop of liquid that I'm going to place on your tongue. Perfect. A salt water. Yes. Okay, and then I'll have you close your eyes. I'm gonna do a bit of a smell test here. I have three different things that I want you to smell. They are all fairly similar, so this test can be a little difficult. Okay. So go ahead and take a whiff. Keep in mind these are all naturally occurring smells, nothing artificial, so they okay. should be. It smells like lemons. Good. And here. Tea tree. Good. And one more. This one is very similar to the first one. Oranges. Good. Okay. So no abnormalities with that. At any point recently, have you lost your sense of taste or smell? No. All of that's been normal. I'm just going to do a quick test for nasal patency. Okay. So I'm going to occlude one side. I want you to breathe in for me. Good. And this side. Good. I'm going to occlude both sides. I would like you to breathe through your mouth. And now close mouth, breathe in and out through both nares. Perfect. Okay. So, nasal patency appears to be intact. Trigeminal nerve is intact. Sense of taste. All within normal limits. You're doing well. Do you have any questions? No. Okay. okay. Thank you. So, let's continue to move on. I have a couple different things that I would like to test now. The first is. I'm just going to bring this down. Okay. You want to do a brief test of your hearing. Okay. 
So I have a device here that's gonna produce a very light puff of air. Mm -hmm. This will also help me test for any perforations in your eardrum. I didn't see any, but if you experience any severe discomfort with this, let me know. That might indicate that there could be a perforation that I missed. Sure. But I also want you to tell me if and when you hear the sound, okay? Okay. So close your eyes for me. Mm -hmm. Just say yes when you hear it. Yes. 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 So no abnormalities with that, and you didn't feel any pain or discomfort on either side? No, none at all. Perfect, okay. So the next thing I'm gonna do is make a different sound, and I'll use my tuning fork for this. So this is gonna produce a very low vibration sound. Okay. Can you hear that? Yes, I can. Okay, so I want you to say yes when you hear it, okay? Okay. Now I want you to tell me when the sound stops. Stopped. Stopped. Good. Now, can you hear this? Yes, I can. Can you yes. tell me if this or this is louder? So one or two? Two. Good. One or two? One, One or two? Perfect. One. Now I want you to tell me, do you hear this equally on both sides? Yes, I can. Perfect. Tell me when it stops. Stop. Good. Testing bone conduction here. Do you feel vibration? Yes, I do. Good. In here? Yes, I do. Perfect. Okay. All of that was within normal limits. Okay. And the last thing I'm gonna to do to test your hearing is make a brief sound with my hands. Okay. This is gonna test directional hearing, so I'll move my hands around. Could be in front of you, behind you, above. Okay. I want you to just say where you hear it, okay? Sure. Right, front, front, left, front, front, bottom. Right, top left, top, bottom, both, both, front, both, left, right, close. Good. Okay, perfect. So your hearing all appears to be intact. Okay. So I want to move on to do just a brief test of the reflexes in your arms. Okay. So I'll have you place your arm on the table for me. And I'm only going to test on your wrist here. Good. Why don't you turn your hand over and up for me? Good. So I'll do that on the other side as well. Good. Perfect. If I can have you hang your jaw loose. Sorry. So no abnormalities with that. I'm gonna do some light palpation around your eyes. If I could just have you remove your glasses for me once again. I want you to tell me if any of these areas are more tender than others, okay? So okay. does this hurt at all? No, it doesn't. So as I move closer to the affected area, I want you to tell me if any of this becomes tender. No, it doesn't. All of that feels okay? Yes. If I move kind of below the eye here, all of that feels okay? Yes, it does. And if I palpate your sinuses, all of that feels okay? Yes. Okay, and in here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yep. And no discomfort upon percussion of your sinuses, correct? No. And if I percuss directly on the areas, there's no pain there. No, there's not. Okay. Just 
I'm going to move this little tool here. I want you to tell me if you feel any burning or stinging sensations as I brush this across your eye. No. Although that feels okay, no discomfort. No, no discomfort. Mm -hmm. Just checking for any peripheral neuropathy. Okay. So what I'd like to do now is test your ocular reflexes. So what I'm gonna do is use just a soft kind of cotton tip applicator to test the reflexes of your eye. Okay. So a normal reaction would be for you to blink. I don't want you to force it, just allow your eyes to close if they feel they need to, okay? So okay. just look straight ahead for me. Sure. Have you close your eyes and I'm just gonna test the reactions in your muscles here so you're gonna feel a light wispiness on your face it's okay I'm looking for a very specific reaction and it does appear to be normal appear to be a slight oversensitivity on that left side. Do you feel it less here than you do here? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so you feel it more so on the left yes, eye. Yes, I do. Okay. Now if I compare this area to this, does that all feel the same? Yes. And if we do here and here, is that the same? Yeah, just about. Feels the same on both sides in the middle. Mm -hmm. How about here versus here? Same. Okay, now here and here. Same. Okay, so where exactly are you feeling it more? Is it lashes or? I think it's lashes. It's, okay, so here versus here. Yeah. Got it, okay. So why don't Give I, me every time. sorry. I have another tool here that's similar, but the texture is slightly different. So as you can see, this one is a little more wispy than this one. Okay. Very slight difference here. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna test the same thing and see if that changes. So okay. is this the same here and here? Yes. And here versus here? Yes. What about here and here? Mm -hmm. Maybe more sensitive on the second one. Okay. Here and here. About the same. Same. Okay. If we do this one again here and here. Same. Okay. Now I have one that's even smaller. So this is going to be very, very soft. Can you feel that? Yes. Does that feel the same as that? Yes. And here and here? Yes. And here and here? No changes here or here, or is it different? It's more sensitive on the left. More sensitive on the left. Yeah. Okay. Appears to only be with quick motion, though. If I do this and this, that feels the same. Correct. But if I do this and this, this feels different. Yes. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Is that something that you've noticed before? No. Okay. So I have another tool here that's called a Wartenberg wheel. This is a very distinctly sharp tool, so mm -hmm. I'm just going to demonstrate on your hand. I apologize mm -hmm. about all the helicopters. We have life flight training happening today, so they're coming in and out training the new paramedics. Okay, I was wondering what that was. So this is a Wartenberg wheel, and it's going to produce a very distinctly sharp feeling. It's not going to perforate the skin or anything, but I do want to see if you have any changes as I move this across your orbital region. So okay. I'm going to bring this from seemingly the non-affected side to the more sensitive side. Right. I just want you to tell me if you feel any difference as I bring this across the area. Does that become any more sensitive? No, it does not. Okay. And the bottom, same thing. Does the sensation change anywhere? No, it doesn't. 
And does that feel the same equally on both sides? Yes, it does. You do here and here. Mm -hmm. Here and here. Yes. Okay. Very, very delicately. Does that feel the same as this? Yes, it does. Okay. So all of that was within normal limits. It appears to be just kind of a variance in your sensation right. on this side versus this side, but I don't think it's anything concerning. It might not even be related to the headaches. Have you ever had an injury to your eye? No, I haven't. Okay, there's no signs of swelling. There's no drooping of the eyelid. Both eyes appear pretty normal and symmetric. So mm -hmm. I would guess it's just a normal variance that can happen and it's nothing that I think we should really be concerned about. Your reaction time is normal on both sides. So if I bring this close to your eye, you don't overreact on either side. So okay. I think we're okay there. So I'll just make note of that just so we have it in our chart. Sure. It does appear to be a slight overreaction on the left side. Sensation is intense. Good, plus one. Okay, we're going to move on to a few sensation tests in your arms. This okay. is going to help rule out any neurological deficits that could be occurring, kind of going down your nerves. Okay could be related. Um, it is something that we like to test when we do a cranial nerve exam. Okay. So I will have you place both arms on the table and just kind of relax your weight fully. Okay. So we're going to start with this dull, scratchy sponge. So it should just be pretty dull feeling. So I will have you close your eyes and mm -hmm. I want you to just say yes if and when you feel it. Okay. Sure. Yes. Yes. Now I want you to tell me if you can feel the difference between this dull and this sharp. Okay. So I want you to say sharp, dull, or sharp. Okay. Okay. Dull, sharp, sharp, dull, sharp, 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 dull, 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 sharp, dull, sharp, sharp. going to test that again. This time I want you to tell me if you feel one or two points. So I have a couple tools here that are identical. Okay. So this would be one and this would be two. Okay. Do you feel the difference? Yes. Okay. So just say one or two. Okay. test is a little more difficult and you did really yeah. well. It's hard to talk until if they were close or not. It is hard and yeah. as they get closer there's a certain yeah. distance that your brain can differentiate between two points. So right. here you can feel two but as I move in yeah, it's when harder. you get about here it's almost impossible to tell. Okay. So you did very well. Thank you. So I would like to use this tool to test the length of your arm. So I'll have you Pronate your hands for me. Perfect. 
and I want you to tell me if this feels any different as I move it down the length of your arm, okay? Okay. So, does this feel the same all the way down? Yes, it does. And here? Yes. And here? Yes. no difference between here and here no and here and here no here and here all feels the same right perfect so lastly i want you to just tell me if this feels the same as this yes it does as well as this and this yes and here and here feels the same yes it does perfect okay so keep your hands how they are what i would like you to do now is tell me if you can feel what letter I draw in your hand. Okay. So I'm gonna draw a specific letter. I'm gonna place your hand on mine and I want you to tell me what letter it is, okay? Okay. It's gonna be a capital letter. Okay. A B. Good. C. Good. P. Good. D. Good, now I'm gonna to switch tools and do the same thing. It's gonna be slightly more difficult. C. X. Good. L. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure. M. Good. H. Good. Mm, I'm not sure. Mm, R. Okay. So let's try that on this other side. I'll start with the initial tool that we started out with. B. P. C. Good. Again, I'm not sure. Okay. L was correct the second time. Okay. So switching to the second tool. Okay. A. Good. L. E. C. A. Okay. So you did have a little bit of difficulty with that, but the majority of them you did get correct. Okay. You did well with the first tool. Right. You did not do well with the H. H, okay. Okay, and then T, mm. L. That was, a, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you, you were kind of mixing them up a little bit, but that's right. okay, you did fairly well with that. So I will give you about a four out of five. Okay. Which is still considered a passing score. Yeah. I could tell it was two mm -hmm. strikes, but I couldn't tell if it was the directional the... graphesthesia yeah. can be a little bit difficult because it's upside down. Yeah. Okay. So what I would like you to do now is stick your hand back out for me. I mm -hmm. want to just see if there's any signs of abnormal swelling in any of the veins of your hand here. So I'll have you make a tight fist for me. See the other hand as well. Okay, all of that appears to be normal, so there's no cause for concern there. Okay. So let's go ahead and move on. Let's do 
we did the sensation test, I do just want to quickly test your ability to sense hot or cold. Okay. So if you'll stick one of your hands out for me, it doesn't matter which one. Can you tell that this is warm versus this cold? Yes. So just say hot or cold depending on what you feel, okay? Okay. Cold, cold, warm, cold, warm, cold, warm, cold, cold. I'm not sure the last one. Warm. Cold, 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 warm, 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 cold, cold, warm, cold, warm, cold, warm. Perfect. Okay, so no abnormalities with that. Alrighty, James. I think the last thing I would like to do just have a listen to your temporal arteries. Okay. So I'm gonna use my stethoscope to listen to the arteries in your face. Okay. I'll be placing it over your eyes as well, so I apologize if I could have you remove your glasses the last no time for me. So just relax, just breathe normally, just listening for any occlusions in blood flow, any abnormalities that might be an indication of something more serious going on, something that might require an MRI, some diagnostic imaging to have a better look at my what might be going on. So I am hearing normal flow on this side. There doesn't appear to be any occlusions. I'm not hearing a lack of flow anywhere. Okay, I'm just gonna compare that to the other side. So I'm going to place this directly over your eye. It's going to be a little cold. Good. Does this sound normal? I'd like you to do is take a deep breath in and hold your breath for about 10 seconds just creating some orbital pressure behind the eyes so I can hear a little bit better ready mm-hmm just hold that breath for me Okay, you can go ahead and breathe out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All of that was normal. Okay. Okay. All right, James, so the next thing I wanna do is test some of the muscles in your face. Okay. Just again, looking for symmetry. So I'm gonna have you smile wide with both teeth. And now top teeth only and bottom teeth only. Good, and stick your tongue out, mouth wide open. Just looking for any shifting to one side. Perfect, can you puff your cheeks out both sides? Good, and now just one and just the other. Good, are you able to squint? Squint, what? Good, okay, so I'm gonna do that again with some resistance testing, so I'll have you puff your cheeks for me. Good, and squint your eyes, don't let me open. And now open, don't let me close. Good, can you push your chin to your chest? Don't let me push it up. And head back, don't let me push it down. And to the right, don't let me push it back. And this side, same thing, good. Now resist me with your shoulders, push up, 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 good. Now can you place your arms like this? I want you to pull me towards you and push me away. And now just with your wrist, push back. Good, and now pull forward, good. Spread your fingers for me, don't let me close them. And now close them, don't let me open. Perfect, okay. Okay, so 
So I am going to just use this here. I want you to hold it in between your two fingers. Don't let me take it away. Good. And now the other side, don't let me take it away. And we'll do that again with your thumb and your index. Good. Don't let me take it away. Here, don't let me take it away. Very good. Okay. So strength and resistance all seems to be within normal limits as well, okay? okay. So it basically determined that your headaches are due to your excess screen use. Unfortunately, because you do work a full-time job, work from home, yeah. your job is remote, you're using your computer, you're using your laptop, you're using your cell phone a very significant portion of the day. There's only so much we can do to alleviate that pain. Okay. What I will say is, like I recommended at the beginning, I would like you to start tracking your headaches. Okay. So as they occur, try to track duration. So I'll put all of this in your GetWell network for you so that you can access it from home. Okay. So I would like you to track duration. So how long the headache lasts. Right the day of the week that it is, so okay. that we can definitively say that this is mostly happening on the days that you work. Mm -hmm. The date, so that we can track how frequently they're happening. Obviously, if you have more than one in a day, you wanna make sure you're tracking all of them. Right. And then what time of the day that it is, okay? So we'll track that for about two weeks. That'll give us a little bit of a graph that we can kind of put together. Okay. If need be, if there is a very distinct pattern that's happening that mm -hmm. coincides with your work days, might be something that we need to start talking with your employer about, right. about mandated breaks, giving you some time away from the screen and that kind of thing, which we can discuss later on. I can provide you a note to give you a little bit more of a break. Okay. So you. what I'll say in the meantime is if you can, for every two hours that you're on the computer, right you need to step away for at least 15 minutes, okay? okay? So whereas now you've been doing about 45 minutes in an eight hour period, yeah. you need to do about 15 minutes for every two hours, okay? okay. Um, if there's an issue with that with your boss, like I said, you can talk to me, message me on the Get Well Network and I can provide you with a work note. Okay. Um, unfortunately, this isn't gonna really get better unless you give your eyes a break from the screen. Yeah. So. It is imperative that you allow yourself these breaks. And in that 15 minutes, you don't want to go from a laptop to a cell phone. You yeah. want to completely eliminate screens Nothing. for that period of time, okay? Right. So set a timer if you have to, step away for 15, okay. and then come back for another two, okay. okay? The other thing I would recommend is downloading a blue light blocker on your phone if you don't already have one. If you have an iPhone, it should be built in. There's right. a setting you can go in and change to blue light block. It just brings a warm tone on your phone see, yeah. and that can help a lot. I think at night it does that, but not during the day, so I can so change you can, the setting. Yes, you can do it during the day as well. Okay. The other thing I would recommend is maybe putting blue light in your glasses. Obviously, you just got this pair of glasses, right. but um, you wear these full time, correct? Even mm -hmm. at home. Okay. Yep. So it's, it's a good investment because you do wear your glasses all the time. Okay. It's just a shield. You can't even tell it's a shield they put on the lens and it just helps block some of the blue light, especially where you're looking at the screen constantly. I do think that would be beneficial to you. Okay. And normally because this is a medical diagnosis, it will be covered in your insurance. Right. So you might not even have to pay for the glasses. And that's okay. something that I could also talk to your optometrist about. Okay. All right. So I will put a note in here for that. I would like you to reach out to your optometrist and ask about it, and I can send the referral code over okay. to make sure that your insurance is gonna cover that for you. All right, good. Okay. All right, um, and as far as just kind of your everyday habits, when you're not working and it's not mandated that you're looking at a screen, try okay. to step away as much as you can. Right. Um, Pay attention to how far away you're holding your phone. So you don't want to hold it any closer than arm's length. So if you're looking at your phone, you don't want to hold it here right. while you're watching TikTok or whatever you're doing. Okay. Try to hold it at at least arm's length. That gives your eyes enough distance to safely watch. Right. As well as your TV, ideally, depending on how big your TV is, it should be across the room from you. You don't want to be sitting up close to it. Okay, okay. that makes sense. When you use your laptop at work or your mm -hmm. desktop, whatever it is that you're using, how far away is it from you? Is it at least like a reasonable distance? It's about arms length away. Okay, good. Yeah. So definitely don't want to be using your laptop yeah. up close because that face. does affect your vision, okay? Okay. 
All right, James. Well, that's really all I have for you. Okay. All of the notes will be in your Get Well Network. I would like you to look at that, speak to your optometrist, like I said. Okay. Um, and then if you have any issues getting those mandated breaks, let me know after the two week period when we kind of have everything yeah, graphed, I can give them a little bit of a better assessment and then we can make sure you're getting the breaks that you need, okay? All right, sounds okay. good. Do you have any questions or concerns for me? No. Okay. As far as the headaches themselves, you've been doing everything correctly. I don't want you to over medicate, but I also, obviously, if you're in pain, you should take something. So right. Tylenol, ibuprofen, you can alternate them every four to six hours as needed. Definitely don't take them at the same time, but you can alternate back and forth if right. need be, okay? Okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much. If you need anything else, you can message me on the portal and let me know and we'll discuss it. All right. Sounds okay. good. Thank you. Thank you.